to the insurance workshop. I'm glad to see such a great turnout this afternoon. They can do more meetings in the afternoon rather than the uh, morning. I'm all for that. My name is Janice Kincaid, and I am the Federation Insurance Chairperson um, for the uh, Insurance Committee. And we have three of my four members here today. I'd like to introduce them, if you guys could stand up. Um, this is Ray Hunsacker, Bill Robb, and Martin Lambert. And missing is Trina Schwartz. Um, and they have been on the committee, I guess this is now their second or second year. So um, doing a great job, have very knowledgeable with insurance, and I am so happy to have them on the committee. And I just met with a prospective uh, person who is interested in joining the committee and anyone else that has insurance knowledge, we can use all the help um, that you have. So please see Ma Bell, she can get you an application for the Federation Committees and more than welcome. Um, the presentation today uh, looks like very interesting. It also has a lot of information that will be pertinent to you as um, condominium owners and homeowner associations. So I'm going to turn it over to Keith. Are you going first? Or USI, Adam Patton and Brian Burns. I don't know which one of you is speaking, but here they are. That game show we had to guess who it was <laughs> to tell the truth right yeah. like, like an astronaut on there or something welcome good afternoon my name is Adam Lopat and I work for USI insurance I run the condo division for USI on the west coast of Florida our office is located at Rocky Point in Tampa Florida we employ 250 insurance professionals at that office we are your insurance advocate or your professional we are your eyes and ears in the marketplace and just let everybody know we are not the insurance company. We work for you all in the community uh, to handle many as all aspects of your insurance. Today we're going to go over uh, six items. Six items by Bell. That's, there you go. Up. A request for insurance certificates. Uh, statute 718-111. Uh, that is the statute that dictates what the association is responsible for covering in case of a covered cause of loss and what the unit owners are responsible for. Keep in mind, we don't make those rules. Uh, it's mostly dictated by the Florida statute. Uh, we'll go through the guidelines of individually go through that. Uh, some are checklists, and then I think there's an... <coughs> insurance marketplace what's going on in the marketplace and then uh, Q&A what I'd like to do is let's do the Q&A after each uh, Roman numeral so then we don't it just makes it easier that way we'll keep it very casual okay I also have 10 Dunkin Donut gift cards and I'm going to ask some trivia questions so to see who's awake during the meeting so we're going to start off with the first trivia question uh, and then if you have the answer, you're going to raise your hand. Now, this has nothing to do with insurance. It's just I was, Brian and I were driving in the car today. I'm always, I'm about 10 years, 10 or 12 years old. Yeah, movie. What are you, 40, how old are you, 43? 42. He's 42 and I'm 53. And I'm always amazed at 10 years when it comes to trivia. So I asked him if he, I saw a Hughes supply truck go by today. And I said to him, that was Howard Hughes' family's old business. And he said to me, who was Howard Hughes? And I'm like, how do you not know what Howard, who Howard Hughes was? So my first trivia question is going to be, Howard Hughes' father patented a device which made them into the Howard Hughes Tool Company, which was made them gazillions of dollars. Who knows what that device was? Raise your hand. Well, can we let somebody on the committee? I don't think that's fair. Let's let's look at what is it? It was a no. It wasn't an oil. It was a part of an oil drill, but it wasn't actually the oil drill. Does anybody know exactly? Yes. That's bit. That's right. It was a bit. It was a specific type of bit that drilled in the ground to make it easier to drill for oil. So that is correct. So I'm going to thank Brian for that. I was 
Who doesn't know who Howard Hughes is here? Besides Brian. <laughs> Very eccentric. Interesting. Okay. So let's turn to page where it says EOI Direct, right here, in the pamphlet that you all have. On the top it says EOI Direct. And what that is, is for you all that have mortgages, every year your mortgage or lender is going to require proof of insurance. When they send you that letter requesting proof of insurance, EOI Direct is the company that is outsourced to issue your certificates of insurance. And that's how you, you can contact them through uh, phone, fax, or email. I always find the easiest way to do it, if you can, is take the letter from your bank, scan it, for those that have scanning capabilities, scan it into your, and send that to EOI Direct, and have them send the uh, bank a copy of it, of the certificate, and send you a copy as well. So then you have a, a record that it was issued, because a lot of times these banks said they didn't get it and they forced place coverage. So anytime you need a certificate of insurance, that is what you look for to obtain that certificate of insurance. And if you don't get it to them, they'll be more than happy to force place coverage and charge you. Got it. Any questions? Questions? Yes. Typically, it takes 48 hours. And if you have any issues, you can reach out to Brian or myself at our email address, and we will expedite that as well. And I think our contact information is on the page right before that. Contact Brian first, though. <laughs> right, I'm the, he's the only one that's there. Jack says that because I've been on three boys' trips three weeks in a row, so that, I'm done with boys' trips, or I'll be divorced, one or two, so no more boys' trips. All right, uh, the next two uh, pages are in regards to statute 718.111. Let's turn this to the page that looks like this. And what this does, it outlines Unit owner's responsibility versus the condo association's responsibility. So if you start at number one, it says roof and roof coverings. If there is a covered cause of loss, let's say Hurricane Ma Bell blows off your roof, the association would be responsible for repairing or replacing that roof subject to the deductible. If the exterior walls are damaged by a covered cause of loss, then the association's responsibility would be responsible for covering that or repairing those walls subject to the deductible. All drywall or common area walls are the association's responsibility to dry out, repair, replace. Common area walls. When they say common area walls, that would be like, if, I don't think any of you association had it if you had a common clubhouse that you were responsible for or a pool that you were responsible for, uh, then that would be a common area, which you all don't have, so we can skip to that. Unit interior, uh, floor, wall, ceiling, paint, carpet, tile, cabinets, appliances, all those items are the unit owner's responsibility from a covered cause of loss, regardless of what cause of loss. So I'll give you an example. Say a pipe breaks in the wall floods your unit, you are still responsible for turning that into your carrier, and your carrier will pay for the drying out, repair, replacement of dry, uh, wall coverings, wallpaper, floor coverings, tile, or whatever you have, cabinets, appliances, countertops, and all personal belongings. If you don't have insurance, then you are going to be personally responsible for what we call, I guess, self-insured. All the other items, drywall, is, is the responsibility of the association. Again, it doesn't matter what caused the loss. HVAC, I think I had a gentleman come and ask me about that. Everything in the building or in your unit that is connected to the HVAC system, ductwork, thermostat, uh, 
compressor on the roof, if it's a covered cause of loss that damages the HVAC system, then that's the association's responsibility. Not if you need a new one, not if it's rusted, or if it, only if it's blown away by a hurricane, a fire, it has to be a covered cause of loss. Maintenance and upkeep is not the responsibility of the association, nor is it covered by insurance. Common area electric would be covered by the association's responsibility. And then we went through the appliance, electrical fixtures, water heaters, cabinets, and interior unit air conditioners would be the association's responsibility as well. Any questions? I see someone shaking their head. Nope? Yes. We'll start. Let's start in order here. Yes. Windows and doors. If the windows and doors are damaged by a covered cause of loss, then the windows and doors would be covered by the association's responsibility. Insurance. So if a window gets blown out or a bunch of windows gets blown out by a hurricane, then those will be covered by the association's insurance policy subject to the deduct applicable deductible. Yes. Deductible. So the deductible is 5% times the value of the building that was damaged. Shared by all the units. Shared by all the units, correct. So if you have a if you have a hundred units in your in your association and ten units suffer a loss and the dedu applicable deductible is ten thousand dollars, that ten thousand dollars would be spread amongst all hundred units. It wouldn't just be spread amongst the units that are damaged. The other deductible is a per occurrence deductible. So if you have a fire that burns down multiple buildings, it would only be the $5,000 deductible. Or if you have a pipe that breaks and affects 50 units, that would only be a $5,000 deductible. All the other deductibles are per occurrence except the hurricane deductibles, which is 5% per building, and it's a calendar year basis. Once we reach that 5% in a calendar year, we'd only be subject to it by a $5,000 deductible after. Yeah, the, the, it would be, the deductible would be shared amongst all the units in the association, and it would be the 5%, if it was a hurricane, it would be times the dip, bop, building that was damaged. But it's one occurrence for all those units. Correct. Y yes. How do I walk down? My, my hearing is terrible, and I just have my ear, I have a sinus infection, and my yeah, ear. Yeah, I, I, can yeah, I, 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 I like to walk around. Yes. Why don't you, t you can talk into the microphone and then I'll, I'll answer it for you. Okay, we had an insurance issue this, this year on one of our um, units. So we have met our deductible for this year, correct? Would that mean, okay, so my question is, since we've met the deductible through that insurance um, issue that we had, one of my um, units, the air conditioner went out, and it's a two-story unit, and it was the one up on the ceiling, or up in the attic, and it did a lot of damage to the drywall, and so on and so forth. So if we were to have a storm, and we were to have damage to any of our roofs or any of our unit, would it not be considered we've already met our deductible? No. No, the question was, if she already had damage to her unit, and a storm comes through, would that meet your deductible? No. that loss to that air conditioner was not due to a hurricane. Right. If you had another loss that was not due to a hurricane, it would be a per, it would, the deductible would be still $5,000 per occurrence, as long as it wasn't associated to the original loss. If you have a hurricane and you meet that 5% in a calendar year and another hurricane hits, then you would be only subject to a $5,000 deductible after that. If you replace windows like a, uh, that were originally there with new windows, 
then the association would pay, or the insurance policy would pay for the replacement of those windows in the way they were prior to the loss. So if you have, if your building has impact glass right now, and you have a hurricane and it damages those impact glass, they're going to give you impact glass windows. Whatever was there prior to the loss, they will replace. Yeah. Boy, I'm really testing my COVID uh, vaccination right here. Okay, our declarations say that anything changed by the owner, including windows and adding the eyes, is now their responsibility to ensure. Yeah, when they say change, that means that when they change it specific to their unit, not if they replace something like like a window with another window. They're saying if they say they have a balcony and they can close that balcony specifically, that's a change. And those that enclosure would be responsible for the unit owner by the unit owner for ensuring that. But not if a unit owner takes a window and replaces it with a brand new window. Hurricane hits and uh, walls are destroyed. The uh, association's insurance pays to rebuild the wall, but I have to pay for maintenance. Is that basically what it comes down to? That's exactly, that is exactly, exactly correct. If, this, if a hurricane blows down the walls, the, the association's going to build those walls back up and put the drywall up, like kind of decorator ready, and then you're going to finish it off. Uh, I'm going to go around this way. Going right to left. I'm Jewish, so I read left to right in Hebrew, but I'm going right to right because we're in English. Okay, we had a resident um, express interest in mounting solar panels, can, which apparently we are not allowed to prohibit. Um, what are the insurance implications of somebody putting solar panels up on the roof? Yeah. So, first of all, the solar panels would not be covered by the association's responsibility. By insurance, so they would have to. If the solar panels uh, damaged the roof, or they wanted to look for replacement, they would have to do that for their homeowner's insurance policy. As far as an exposure is concerned, I, don't, I can't think of one unless the implement the installation of the solar panels damages the roof. I would make sure they get some type of uh, insurance certificate from the contractor that does that. But if you put the solar panels on top of the roof that are installed specifically by the owner, are not would not be covered by the association's insurance. Yes. They said it's common area there. No, this is not unit in common area. Uh, unit interior. Yeah, unit interior. Yes, sir. Okay. If an owner has insurance and you get a water break and you got flood damage, do you need flood damage insurance? No. No. So if a pipe breaks and floods you, that is not a flood. A flood is rising water that covers two acres of land that is normally not there. So that is not a flood. Your homeowner's policy should cover that. Any questions over here? Anybody else over here? Okay. Oh, hold on. Come up there. Yep. How is uh, uh, problems with the actual foundation addressed, like shifting ground that creates cracks, or, or maybe even a structural weakness that shows up yep. later? Okay, good question. Foundations and underground pipes are not covered by insurance policies. So those, if you had a cracking or something wrong with your foundation, that would not be covered by the insurance policy. If you have a sinkhole, sinkhole's covered, but it would not It would pay for some of the foundation, but foundations are typically not covered. We do have sinkhole coverage, though. Yes? So that's if you have that cause. You mentioned if it's, a, if it's covered. That cause is covered. Insurance will avoid the coverage because what's the mind? You say, well, yeah, if it's covered. So good question. question. So when I talk about covered cause of loss, what I'm talking about is under the property policy, we have, I'm not going to get too technical here, we have a special cause of loss form. Now that form basically says everything's covered except what's excluded. The list of things that are typically excluded are nuclear, war, things that happen over a long period of time that are maintenance issues, not sudden and accidental, uh, termites, rodents, that type of stuff. 
Well, this covers everything except the things that, we're, that are excluded under the policy, which are, which are the things that more, if you want a, a copy of the policy that has a list of exclusions, I can send that to Ma Bell. If you send me an email, I can send that to you too. But it's an all perils form, basically. It's the best form, basically. Everything covered is stuff that's excluded. And the things that are excluded are typical things like, again, wear and tear, termites, uh, rodents, uh, things that happen over a long period of time, maintenance issues. Just keep in mind, insurance is not a maintenance policy. It covers sudden, if you remember this one cause of one thing, the sudden and accidental cause of loss. Going deep, we're going to the top level here, in the rafters. So, based on Florida statute, appliances, electrical fixtures, water heaters, and cabinets are unit owner's responsibility, where it says yes. HVAC systems are not, based on statute. Those are responsibility. Doesn't matter. That's correct. Everything to do with the HVAC system is covered by, if it's damaged by cause of loss. Doesn't matter what your documents say. Yep. I'm not an attorney, and I don't play one on TV, but I can tell you it doesn't matter what your docs say, the statute takes precedent. I, I don't think that's accurate. I don't think that's correct. Yep. If, uh, I don't need a copy. If that's what your attorney says, but I can tell you the statute 718 says all HVAC systems in the complete unit, if it's caused by covered cause of loss, is the association's responsibility. And based on my knowledge, that statute takes precedent over anything in your docs. And they do that purposely because docs say different things all across the state of Florida. So I think you need to get different legal advice. That's right. That's, and this is right from the state law. Right, but you're saying it wasn't modified. You said it's a, when was it modified? And, yeah, but th that statute, this statute just came out in 2009. So I don't think your uh, docs were updated since 2009. Maybe they were. If they weren't, then that statute takes precedent. Yeah. Somebody adds like a patio or a porch or solar panels or whatever that goes back to your own your own insurance policy. I understand that. What I just wanted to ask you is so basically everybody has a standard HO six for their condo policy. Is that is that kind of stuff that can be routinely added to a condo policy? Like I can add solar panels as a specific coverage to my policy. Yeah. Uh, good, good question. Uh, you'd have to ask the insurance carrier you're being insured with. So I would call your insurance professional and ask them, say, hey, I have solar panels or I've made this change to my building. Can I add this coverage to my HO6 policy? Some carriers will say yes, some carriers will say no. So it depends on the carrier you're with. You may not be able to, correct.
the storm in the gutters are responsible. Gutters are permanently attached. The gutters that are permanently attached to the building would be the associate we cover under the property policy, subject to the 5% deductible. Five percent times the building that was damaged, and then that percentage deductible will be uh, divided by the number of units in the. That is correct. Okay. Carports. I mean, we. A lot of us are carport. The carports. Some of them are in pretty good shape. Others are getting at some damage. And here's the question: If we, if they're blown away, are they covered by the association, or does that fall back? On I've been told both ways. Uh, there is coverage for the carports uh, under the association's property policy subject to the deductible. So yes. Deductible is 5% times the damage times the value of the carport that was damaged subject to a five thousand dollar minimum. What well, could be more than that? Depends if it's if the, if the, if it's if it's greater, it's whatever's greater, the five thousand or the five percent. No, so last year, previous to last year, the deductible was 2,500 for all perils. Last year, it was increased to 5,000. It was never, as far as I know, it's never, never been 1,000. If that's the low, if that's the high, it's either 5,000 or 5% 5 of the build, the times the building of the, times the value of the building. Correct. Case of HVAC, if it, if your unit is struck by lightning, is that covered as with the association or under the homeowner's insurance? Your AC unit. So if your AC unit gets struck by lightning, that is a covered cause of loss under the property policy, subject to a five thousand dollar deductible, and that would be uh, covered by the association policy, greater than the deductible. Just to let you know, lightning striking. When you see, when you say it's lightning, typically it's not lightning. It's typically a power surge, which typically is also covered under the property policy because not to get too technical, but there's a mechanical breakdown element in, in the heritage policy that picks up that coverage too. Yeah. My question is, uh, does the Florida stature require the association policy to be on a replacement basis uh, in lieu of uh, actual cash value basis? Yes, it, it does mention that the uh, that it should be replacement costs. Yes. Now a lot of those policies are going to ACV and roofs, so that's going to be a big debate this year in legislative session. Excuse me. Oh, sorry. Sorry about that. Shit. Here you go. Yes. Um, I live in a unit that has a common wall between the two, and the electrical shows how many watts and stuff you use are between them and we were told that because they're outdated we have to pay for those is that true that's not an insurance question that's more of a Keith question I, I don't know what the answer to that would be sorry all right yes under what condition are the screens on the lanai's covered Screens on the lanai's, I think they were not originally installed, so they would be you know, under responsibility for screens on the lanai's. And also the policies of screwed screens too, so there's no coverage for screens on lanai's. No, not covered. Any other questions? Oh, you already had one. I think your time's up. Hold on, Jack. All right. Well, everybody wearing yellow is getting multiple questions tonight. You said the foundations are not covered under any circumstances. We have a lot of these old trees in here that are causing a great deal of damage to people's interior floors and so on and so forth. Most of us have asked to have these trees taken down. So is it the liability now of the association because they refuse? We can't take them. I know you're not a lawyer, but if the association doesn't take them down and we can't take them down and they cause damage, who's responsible? 
A couple parts to that question. First of all, if oak trees, I've had, actually Keith and I have taken, if oak trees over a long period of time, the roots cause damage to the foundation of the building, that's not a covered cause of loss. Because remember, what was the first thing I said? Sudden and accidental. Roots growing, roots, roots growing over a long period of time is maintenance, not, uh, now if the oak tree falls and damages the building, then that would be a covered loss because it's sudden and accidental. But as far as maintenance and taking out the oak trees, that would be a Keith question. All right, I'm going only coming down people with yellow. Not sure, hold on. So, 5%, so if you have a, if your building's $100,000 and, and there's a hurricane that causes, just one single building, let's keep it simple. It's a $100,000 building and it gets, and the roof gets blown off by hurricane Ma Bell. Then your deductible will be 5%, times $100,000 or $5,000. And that $5,000 would be divided by the number of units. And then if you have loss assessment coverage, yep, the number of units in the entire community would have to split the, that's right, paying for that, that's right. Individual unit owners, correct. Pay the $5,000 deductible. Well, the home, the unit owner that is, would also be responsible for that, but they wouldn't be responsible for the whole $5,000. So the way your condo of the rocks read, it would be divided by all the units. Okay, so you have a $100,000 building, Hurricane Model blows it down. Now you have a $5,000 deductible until they pay for the replacement of the building. That how many units do you, if you have 24 divided by 5,000 would be the deductible that every unit owner would be responsible for. Add their pocket, that's correct. Now. If you have homeowners coverage under your H06 policy, uh, there your policy has a $2,000 loss assessment coverage automatically. Each association and every unit owner should have got a letter from Keith telling you what your maximum out of pocket assessment would be due to a hurricane. You should have gone back to your homeowners professional and asked them if they could increase that loss assessment coverage to match that out of pocket assessment. If you did, then you have no exposure at all to a hurricane. Deductible. You didn't get a letter. All right, whoever didn't get a letter, uh, talk to Keith. Send an email to Keith or Ma Bell and Brian. Keith, Ma Bell, and Brian. Oh, I already went over. One more. All right, we're going to take all the time up here. Yes. From the outside, seeping in to the room, and it's like bubbles go off. Water seeping into a building. Is it coming from underground or from the sides? Typically, water seeping into a building is not a covered cause of loss because there's no physical damage to the envelope of the building. In order to have a covered cause of loss, you have to have physical damage to the building, an opening created. In the heritage policy, there is some coverage for wind-driven rain, so potentially that could be covered, but it's still subject to a, uh, the hurricane deductible. So there could be coverage, there may not be coverage, you need to talk to your camera about that. Irrigation problem, that probably would not be covered because, again, that's, that's caused a long period of time, unless it was sudden and accidental. All right. I think Jack has one question, and then we'll uh, answer a couple of trivia questions here. All right. It's like Monty Hall here. There's some stuff in my pocket here. I just want a clarification from you on gutters. If gutters are the homeowner's responsibility and the homeowner install, installs them, and if they are damaged in a hurricane, you're telling me they would, or a windstorm, that those gutters would be covered by the association, even though the association didn't install them. Right. So if the gutters were originally installed by the developer, and they were and they're permanently installed, then it would be the association's responsibility. But if the gutters were not originally installed and they were additioned by the homeowner, potentially that probably wouldn't be covered. My understanding was that it was originally installed by the developer or not. But that would be the the It was an option. It's a what? Option. So yes, the gutters would be covered. If they chose that option, if they chose the option of gutters, I, it's a great question. I don't know. But it would be covered, in my opinion. Uh-oh. I just, I just want to point out one quick thing. It's 
says unit owner responsibility, it doesn't mean that it's, you have to have insurance to have it covered. That's your responsibility if you have insurance or not. So just, just to clarify, I've seen there's a little bit of confusion on, right, it, that's the unit owner responsibility if you have it or not on, the, on, the, on those covered items. Okay, a couple quick trivia questions and then we'll get moving here. So what was the name of the hurricane that hit Louisiana this year? Ida. Can't give it a All right, and what what category was it? I said, let's set. First of all, there is no category seven. I, heard, I don't know if my hearing's bad, but I heard someone say category seven. Four. All right, four. Category four. I'm going to be this young lady right here. All right. What is the most popular dog in the U.S.? I'm a big dog guy. No, not a retriever. Labrador. Labrador. All right. Here we go. I have a schnoodle. It's a brand new dog. It's a half schnauzer, half poodle. It's awesome. His name's Bowden. He runs my house. All right. What do we got next? Okay, so this, I'm kind of a visual person, so I, it always helps, this helps me explain things. And you can see visually, the green is what the unit owner is responsible for. And then the, I guess the pink, or the yeah, pink is what the association is responsible for. Kind of looks like it's raining too. Any questions? Yes. So ceilings are the association responsibility, but the texture on the ceilings or the popcorn or whatever or the paint is the unit owner's responsibility. What? Correct. So if you have a unit above you or beside you and a pipe breaks and it damages your drywall and your wallpaper, uh, the association would pay for the drying out, repair, replacement of the drywall, and then you would pay for the wallpaper or paint. And Keith has this electronically too, so if you guys want to electronically, we'll be more than happy to send it to you too. Okay, next is the summer checklist. So for you, how many of you all go out of town up to some cool weather in the summer? Yeah, nice, I like that. Uh, these are some of the tips that we recommend you all doing uh, before you go out of town and leave your unit vacant. And also, I would make sure you check with your insurance professional that does your HO6 policy to make sure there's no exclusions for a vacancy clause that says if your unit's vacant for more than two weeks or 30 days uh, and you have a loss, uh, there's coverage. Because a lot of homeowners policies or HO6 policies have vacancy clauses in those policies that say if you're not in your home or if your home is vacant for two weeks or four weeks, a lot of times there's no coverage. So make sure you check that and make sure your insurance professional is well aware that you are headed up north for the winter, summer. Winter, I don't know, summer. S refresh your batteries. Make sure your batteries are good to go on your smoke alarms. One. Yes. One thing under the summertime where it says remove all items from balconies. I'm sure this is like for a high rise condominium, but. They also should remove all pots, um, anything that could be picked up by wind and blown into the garage or into the lanai, like a pot. Exactly, Janice is correct. If you have anything that could be picked up by wind, uh, please put that in your unit and remove that because if you look, think about broken glass. Typically, it's not the wind speed that breaks the glass; it's the wind picks up debris and that debris breaks the glass. So real important that you try to keep uh, your lanai's and everything cleaned up before you head out of town for hurricane season. Okay. How many hurricanes since 1900 have formed in the Atlantic Ocean in November? And hit Florida. How many? Since in November, since 1900, how many? 
None, no, it's not. It's somewhere between zero and five. And it's not zero or five. No? Four. Yes, four. All right, I'm going to give the lady way up there. What was the strongest hurricane ever to hit? Ever, strongest recorded history hit hurricane ever in the, uh, in the Atlantic Basin? No, it's not Andrew. It could be, and I'll give you a hint, it could be a, a woman or a man's name. <laughs> not Michael, no. Not Sandy, but that's close. It's the name. No, Mitch. Mitch. Hurricane Mitch. Strongest hit. All right. Okay. What? <laughs> I was just reading the New York Times. I said, what city is the RV capital of the United States? Not in Florida. What city is the RV capital? It says it's the RV capital of the United States. No one's going to get this, but go ahead. It's in Indiana. Yes, that is correct. Oh, in Toledo. Wow. Did you read the New York Times too? Oh, okay. All right, I'm going to give you two Dunkin' Donuts gift cards for that one. That's amazing. That is unbelievable. I'm very impressed. Are you? How do you know that? If you drive from Ohio to uh, Chicago, you go through Alford, Indiana, and they tell you. There's signs everywhere telling you. That's awesome. <laughs> I don't love that. All right, let's go to, uh, what do we got, market conditions? Okay, so loss assessment, really important. Good point, Brian. So loss assessment coverage. Under your HO6 policy, which is an acronym for a condo policy, by Florida statute, your policy has to include $2,000 of loss assessment coverage. And when do we say loss assessment coverage? That means if we have hurricane, Jack, blow down your building, and we have to assess every unit owner to pay for that deductible, that $2,000 can be used to pay for that assessment so you don't have to pay it out of your pocket. What? Okay, so loss assessment coverage. What it's for is if you have an, if you have an assessment to each unit owner by the association to pay for a hurricane deductible, okay, that $2,000 will be used to pay for that assessment. We sent a letter out to every unit owner, every association that's told each unit owner what your maximum assessment would be in case of a catastrophe. That should have called your homeowners, homeowners professional and asked them to increase, if the 2000 are enough, ask them to increase that loss assessment coverage to that number. So if we do have a catastrophic hurricane and it meets that deductible, you would not be personally responsible for it. You would turn that into your carrier and they would pay for that through the loss assessment coverage. To be, to be clear, there is no case where the 2,000 is enough. So in most of your communities, it's 5,000 or 8,000. And so all of you need to be contacting your individual unit owner carriers to increase to the limit that is in coordinates with your uh, community. That way you won't be any, out of pocket anything in the event of a hurricane. So very important to know. Uh, all it takes is a simple phone call to your agent. Generally, the cost has been an additional you know, $14 a year We've had an extremely high success ratio with all residents increasing their limit to accommodate what their exposure is. So we just wanted to make sure we got that point across. Yeah. Is the maximum going to increase in, in uh, 2022? I hear, maybe? No. No, at this point, we don't anticipate any changes on that value for next year's renewal. The top is 10,000, but we're, we're, uh, most associations are between five and eight, something like that. Because as the market hardened, we did increase our hurricane deductible, and that's why it's important that you guys, it doesn't, if you guys increase your loss assessment coverage to match that maximum assessment, you will have no additional exposure at all. Yes, yeah. That letter was, uh, went out in uh, May of, of, of this year. If we you can... did not get one, ask Keith or Ma Bell to send you one. And my email is on all of those sheets, and if you don't know what your value is, email me with what your community is, and I can reply back with what that value is. 
Hold it's on. all that sheet. It's Brian Burns. Brian, yes, ma'am. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sure. Uh, I would look to Keith's team on how best to get those presidents to get that message out to their uh, unit owners. Yes. Does the letter went out uh, explain the value? Yes. There's a specific amount for every community, and that amount is in that letter to the penny on what your exposure can be. Can you explain what the uh, deductible fund, the $4,500, it's so the first of the 5000 how that deductible fund works? That one, need to do it. Hold on. We're going to switch to a deductible fund, and then I'm going to talk about the uh, marketplace. Okay, Jack's going to do it. Adam has mentioned the $5,000 deductible, so we're not talking hurricane, we're talking regular occurrence, that the associations have $5,000 deductible. That's the association deductible for damage to your property. As part of the Federation's budget, there is a category called insurance deductible. And I believe next year, and I wish Alan was here, Next year, it's around $160,000 that we have in that deductible fund. That deductible fund pays everything except $500 of your $5,000 deductible. So when you have occurrences, whether you have one occurrence or 10 occurrences within your association that is covered, and I'm not speaking of insurance, of hurricane, I'm speaking of regular occurrences uh, where you have a uh, insurable event and that event is uh, $5,000 or more or less that you file a claim with your CAM, your CAM will take it to the Federation Board and the Federation Board will reimburse you up to $4,500 of the $5,000 deductible. So I wanted you to understand that this is not something the homeowners are responsible for. It's something that the Federation covers you under. Correct, Janice? Yes. Yeah. So example would be you have a pipe break. Um, you, it, it, it is determined that it is an insurable event because it happens sudden, um, suddenly and accidentally. And um, when you go to get the um, amount, the, the association, remember, has to do all the way up through the drywall. Um, so when you get that amount, the association president will then turn it into their CAM. The association will be responsible for $500 and the rest of that money will go back to the association from the federation, from this insurance deductible fund. All, a lot of, most of the boards, I'm sure, I hope all of the boards are aware of this insurance fund when they um, take office. Thank you, Janice and Jack. Any questions before we talk about, uh, get into the market conditions? Yes. Hold on, let me bring the microphone up there. I think a common problem is leakage. So if there's not maintenance of an HVAC and there's leakage, association still pays for it if the homeowner was negligent in maintaining? So leakage, it depends how long it was leaking. If it was leaking and you discovered it within 24 hours, typically that's a covered cause of loss. That's been leaking for months, then no. Again, that's more of a maintenance issue. Any questions? Yes. Gutters. You need new gutters. So, real quick, if you, if you need new gutters, then you need to, that's not a covered cause of loss. Just because you need new gutters. I need a new car, but I can't turn, so talk to my insurance company and say, hey, I need a new car, it's old. I, I, I just, if they leak, again, that's something that, I know, if my car leaks oil, do you think I get a new car too? Adam, your car is fine. I, know, I don't have oil in my car anyways. But I'm just saying, not maintenance issues. You gotta think of couple, if a hurricane blows down your gutters and then it exceeds the deductible, then yes, it was originally installed, then yes. But not if you... 
Okay, there you go. Brian will help pay for it. Call Brian. Just, just keep in mind, they're not maintenance policies. Okay? Brian will pay for that too. Brian pays for everything. All right. Now, here comes the really good news. No, I'm just keeping. So, the marketplace. How many people have you read, have read the paper talking about insurance costs and carriers pulling out of the marketplace? Yeah. So, I've been doing this for 26 years. I've been through three hard markets. And what we call a hard market is when rates, inc prices are increasing, carriers are pulling out of state, reinsurance costs are going up, and there's, and there's, uh, and, the, and there's a limited amount of markets for us to bid your account on. That's where we're in right now. We're in a hard market. Uh, I was just at a, a, a producer council meeting for Amherst, which is one of the largest cat riders of wind in Florida. Uh, they told us their panel of carriers haven't made money in five years. Uh, and they anticipate the market to be hard again next year and probably into 2023. I don't see rates going down. Uh, I see rates going up. Again, we did budget for a 20% increase next year. Hopefully we come under that. We just don't know now. Uh, but it's a very difficult time in the marketplace, especially for a billion dollars of property insurance, older construction, uh, not or impact glass, uh, sinkhole areas. We are in a sinkhole area too, which they can't buy reinsurance for. So again, we did a great job this year, the insurance committee, along with the Federation Board, leveraging our power with the bulk purchasing power of the whole community to really get a, a really good deal from Heritage. Hopefully we'll get a good deal next year from Heritage and we'll be under the budget. Again, we're budgeting a 20%, hopefully we're under that budget, but the marketplace couldn't be any worse right now uh, that it, it's really bad. So uh, not only a property, a general liability and all the other lines as well, uh, luckily, our loss history is good. So we are, from a loss history specific to the Federation's communities, we are we are profitable. But unfortunately, it's the other factors uh, that we're dealing with that are raising rates in the entire state of Florida. And then also Ir the Irma situation, I mean Irma, but the catastrophe and Champaign Tower South obviously didn't help the market. It might not necessarily hurt us as much because we're not a high rise building or under six stories, but it still doesn't help. There are great Americans pulled in the marketplace James River now is asking a thousand questions for older buildings. So again, it just makes a hard market worse. Uh, but again, we'll do our best for you all to bid, send the bid packages out and get uh, the best quotes at the best pricing from as financially stable carriers as possible. But the market is bad and we don't anticipate to be any better uh, in 2022. Yes. So, so, what, what we do is we send out the bid packages on the general liability and property to about, on the property maybe 100 different carriers, and on the liability maybe 50. Uh, last year, no one came back to be competitive with Heritage, not even close. Yes, they did respond saying, and typically what the, last year they say they cannot, they, not, they cannot quote based on a uh, sinkhole activity area, age of the building, or can't touch, they can't be competitive with what Her Heritage is offering. Uh, on the liability side, uh, same with Aspen, we were paying $40, $45 per unit. On average condo, if you didn't bulk purchase it, they're paying $75 to $100 a unit. Uh, so again, you, and most of the uh, communities similar to you all are probably paying rates 50 to 75 cents on the property and we're only paying roughly 40 cents. So we're getting a big discount by bulk purchasing. Hopefully we'll continue getting a discount, but this still doesn't mean we're not gonna, we're still gonna get an increase next year. And hopefully Heritage offers a renewal. Yes. Yeah, I think Jack and I, uh, we're looking at uh, $17 a month per unit. And that's, keep your fingers, that's 17, that's 20% would be, I mean, hopefully Heritage stays on that, because if they don't, we're gonna have a, not a good time. Yes. Hold on, I'm going to bring the microphone up there. Right, thank you. Do you do your cost per association or a cost that's a total and divide by the total number of associations? 
question, I think it's 20%. If you pay $100,000 for your insurance, I think your budget would be $120,000. Okay, let's be quick. Yeah, Keith, are we, are we dealing per association for insurance because each association has different value? Or are we taking the total cost and dividing by all the associations equally? It's uh, each association's property policy is an individual policy for that association, so it is a standalone. Okay. You're, you're still using your, your bulk as the federation to get uh, Okay. The other question is, are you taking into, great in, into consideration all the mitigation for all the u new units that are meet the 150 mile an hour code? So if there are units that are specifically, that are standalone units and that every window and every opening meets the 150 mile an hour code, make sure you give that mitigation form to Keith and we will get that credit for you. Keith, well, if Keith, we, there needs to be a mitigation form provided to Keith so we can provide that to the property carrier in our bid packages. But keep in mind, in order to get that credit, every opening in that building has to be impact glass or hurricane shutter up to new code, doors, windows, and everything. And if you have that, you need to get a new mitigation form and give it to Keith. What did you say? You have to hire a company to do it. You have to hire a company to do it. Yes. So we're locked in till April 15th of 2022. Uh, so the new rates will go into effect April 15th, 2022 to April 15th, 2023. Right. What we're doing, it's a budget, just a guesstimate for April 15th for next year. Just real quickly, um, Adam is saying a 20% increase. That's overall. So that's every single policy. That's the property policy, general liability, crime, umbrella. Across the board altogether, there's a 20%. But individually, each policy is not going to see 20%. So the umbrella is not going up 20% alone. So that's all the uh, I just did the math. It's, it's right under $12. It's a seven hundred seventy-seven thousand dollar increase, fifty-five twenty-five. Along with my iPhone calculator, correct? It's uh, eleven dollars and sixty-four cents per unit per month, and that's again that's that's a general average for everybody. And again, it's a a budget projection, you know, six months out. go shop every single policy so they have aired it they're going to shop the property policy so aired is going to rebid on it. they're going to get other bidders to put figures out they're going to do the same thing for the general liability the crime so they're going to shop every single policy you have for the marketplace and get back in any competitive bids or anybody that wants to write the policy yeah but we do that every year so every year we have to start like it's a brand new account we have to send the bid packages out 120 days in advance answer any questions, and then we work with the carriers to create internal competition to drive rate down and pricing down. So we do that every year. And there's no carriers that we don't represent that are financially stable in the state of Florida. And the reason why it's such a big, you know, it had to be a projection because the renewal packages that, that USI will get back don't occur until, you know, 45 days out of renewal. So beginning of March, they actually can start seeing actual numbers. Such a long gap of the budget projection. And the budgets yeah. are done November, December, January. So yes. Oh, that's a question. question. How do they determine the value? Because they used to come in every year and physically inspect all of our units by cars and give us a replacement cost for each unit by address. I still have a copy of that that I used to get. Yeah. Back in 
Yes. Yeah, so the question is, what is the basis of the replacement cost in the policy? By Florida statute 718, we have to have an appraisal every 36 months and insure to that appraisal. We have an appraisal that was done last year and we're insuring, or two years ago, and we're insuring to that appraisal value. Uh, we don't do it, you hire an independent company to do that. And it doesn't matter what your building's selling for. It, it, remember, insurance is based on replacement costs, so what it would cost to replace. Your house could sell for a million dollars and only cost $500,000 to replace, or it could sell for a million and it could cost $2 million to replace. Again, replacement cost versus sale price, is, and it doesn't include land, it's two different subjects, but it's based on an appraisal that we have obtained. And keep in mind, when values go up, your costs are going to go up. Let me give you an example. Say your home's insured for $100, and now with the supply chain being messed up and concrete labor, say now it, inflation caused it to go up 15%. Now it's 115 to replace versus 100. Even if the rate stays the same, your premiums will go up 15% because you're insuring 15% more. So the likelihood of having us having a total cash cashier is extremely unlikely, and we try to, we stay within the law and do it every 36 months, but we try not to uh, go sooner than that because at the end we just pay more money. Yes. Twenty one copy of the twenty one budget. I don't know that'd be a key question. And when would the twenty two budget? Twenty two two twenty twenty two that should be ready. You want to just send me or Cam an email, we can provide that. If the next year's budget is gonna be presented on November nineteenth at the Federation of Membership meeting, that'd be sent to every uh, uh, board to review and edit for their decision. What's that? I'm just letting you know that the next budget presentation for the whole, for all of next year will be November 19th. All right, any more insurance questions before we wrap it up? I got two more gift cards, three more. Oh, one more question before I go into my final three Jeopardy questions. Yes? So, Jeopardy says that when rates increase, the general rates are affected. Yes. Yeah. Okay. What's the question? Correct. If you adjust, if you made your Lanai unique, different than it was originally built, then that is not covered by the insurance policy. You have to add that to your homeowner's policy. That's correct. Good question. I don't, that's a great question. I don't know. That would be, I don't know. How does she know if the lanai was? How does she know if the lanai is original or has it been? In their first FSR records, should have it. Yes. Okay. Right. Okay. Okay. All right. Oh. So if, if you don't understand or if you don't know if it was altered or not, Jack said that First Service has every request form for alteration. So you should be able to go through FSR to see it, go through the records to see if uh, previous owners had requested an alteration form. All right. Uh, a couple more here. Insurance. Yes. Kind of an off, different kind of question. That makes me nervous when someone says that, starts a question like that. <laughs> If it's licensed for road use and it goes on roads that are public roads, you need to have that insured by your auto insurance. So I would always say auto insurance. If it's not licensed for road use and you're just if using it as a golf course, then typically your homeowner's policy will cover that. I say typically every carrier is different. So again, that would be a question for your insurance, your personal insurance professional. Driveway. 
Uh, driveways are driveways are in, are not covered by insurance, but I would think that the association responsibility to maintain and keep up. Oh, yes, last one. Yes, sir. Flood insurance, great question. You're probably not going to like my answer, but I'm going to give it anyways. People always say, we're not in a flood zone, we're in an X zone. Well, everybody's in a flood zone. Every area is in a flood zone. There's only 250-year designated high hazard zones, which says that you have to buy flood insurance if you have a mortgage, and those are zones A and V. If you're in an X zone, uh, you're not in a high hazard zone, but just to give you bad news, most areas that are flooded uh, are in X zones. So my recommendation is if you want flood insurance, you should buy it. I live in uh, Clearwater. I'm 35, 40 feet above sea level. I buy a flood policy uh, because I, I'm a worry ward. I'm an insurance person, you know. So, that's, But anyway, so everybody's in a flood zone. Just to let you know that. X just means you're not in a high hazard zone. Yeah. Sinkhole. Yes. One of the reasons why we have trouble getting bids on the Federation at Kings Point is yes, we are in a sinkhole area. And sinkholes are bad news because it, carriers cannot buy reinsurance for sinkholes. If you think about wind, which is, the, which is a catastrophic event, most carriers buy reinsurance for that. Insurance, in case there is a loss, to protect their, their, their downside. You can't buy reinsurance for sinkholes, so they're on the hook for first dollar sinkholes. So yes, we're in a sinkhole area, and it's, it makes it more difficult. We do have insurance for sinkholes, yes. We have insurance for sinkholes currently. Currently, and not in next year, but I don't know. Yes. Adam, you might want to clarify the exact what is a reinsurance market and just. Yeah, okay, so reinsurance, I'll give you uh, kind of a, if you look at insurance costs, if you look at a carrier, Costs. If you pay a dollar in premium, where does their what do they use? What do they do with that dollar? Okay, seventy-five to seventy percent of that dollar that you pay for insurance goes to purchase reinsurance for wind. And I'll give you example how they do that. Let's say Heritage. Heritage says they have a billion dollars of property insurance in Florida. They will run it through a model, and that model will say that in any one event, you could sustain five hundred million dollars in losses. So they go to Lloyd's of London, Munich Re, and they buy reinsurance up to $500 million, okay? So that is the majority of their costs. When reinsurance go up, and reinsurance costs go up when reinsurers pay out, like Hurricane Ida and Hurricane Irma, all those things, when they pay out, their costs go up. So, and it's harder to get. So when I talk about reinsurance, that's reinsurance, and that's one of the main reasons why rates are going up, because their costs are going up. The other costs are payroll and commissions, and that's about it. Commissions, payroll, and, uh, and reinsurance, which reinsurance makes up 75% of it. And they have trouble getting it now, too. That's why they have to restrict their capacity. Maybe last year they get to buy $500 million of reinsurance, but guess what? Now they cannot get 500 because it's not affordable, so they have to buy $300, $300 million worth of insurance at the same price they were paying for $500 million of insurance. So again, one of the things since we're on the topic, insurance companies, don't want to raise their premiums. The only reason they're raising your premiums is because they have to in order to make money. The only way they make money is by keeping your account. They lose money when they lose your account or they have to write new businesses more expensive. So they're not raising their costs because they're not making more money. They're raising their costs because their costs are going up. Okay, just when the market was soft from 05 to 09, these carriers were making tons of money and your rates were going down. So the more profitable the carriers are, that's when the market becomes soft again. But when the carriers start losing money and their combined ratios are over one, which they are now, and a combined ratio means anything over one, means every dollar in premium you pay, uh, anything above a dollar, that they lose money. Right now the combined ratio of all Florida carriers was $1.17, and we didn't even have a hurricane last year. So that means for every dollar you paid in premium, they lost $17. So until that, still, and I was, I was quoted in the New York Times recently, uh, that, and I basically, this is my quote, I said, still insurance companies start making money, uh, our rates are gonna continue to go up. Once they become profitable again, rates are gonna start coming down and carriers are gonna come back to Florida. So, 
Uh, yes. So typically uh, what they do is they'll come and fill it in with cement and, and refortify it. If you can't rebuild, then they'll give you the, the, policy, the limit on the policy. So if you have your home insured, if your building's insured for $300,000 and they can't rebuild it, they're going to give you 300 grand. And that would go to the owner, not to the association? Well, uh, I think it would go through the association to you. Yes. If you don't have flood insurance, just consider the, fo the following. Climate change is real. We are caught between the Gulf of Mexico and the Atlantic Ocean. And remember, Katrina dropped, what, 50 inches of rain within a few hours? And all this stuff is increasing because of climate change. And we're getting more of them, and all the scientists are telling us they're going to get worse. So I would look, if you don't have flood insurance, I'd definitely look into it. If I remember, I think I'm paying about five or five fifty a year for it, but um, it's something that you should seriously consider. I'd rather that you take a look at it and make your decision from knowledge and make the make a conscious choice, not from ignorance. Thank you. One thing is, when we were first uh, working on your account, I was talking to an underwriter, and we were mapping it. How far do you how far do you think you all are from the tip of Tampa Bay here? Not as far as you think it is. No. Seven miles, according to the crow's fly. Seven miles. You got one? Okay. Yeah. Tip of tenth day from the... Okay, so last, last question. And this was in the St. Pete Times, I think, this weekend. When was the last time the Tampa Bay area got hit directly by a hurricane? Hold on. I mean, it, what? 68, though. No, I was born in 68, but not 68. 1920. Who said 1921? Pittsburgh fan. All right. And then, did you say 21 too, sir? All right. Here we go. I don't have any ticket. I don't have any left. I'm sorry. Uh, call, send an email to Brian. Skim is your address. He'll send you a $10 gift card to Dunkin' Donuts. Any problems with the presentation, email Brian. All right, listen, I really appreciate it. Again, if you have any questions, please email us. Uh, and we'll, we're going to do another one of these in, uh, probably uh, closer to the end of the year, too. Thank you very much.